Yo, what's up? This is your boy Derek Branch here at St. Discussions on Strike 7 Sports. And real quick, I just want to talk about the recent chatter, or you know, that I've seen online, on social media, message boards, and even on um, talk radio in the walls in general with certain individuals, certain personalities. And that's the idea of, well, the thought of the Saints possibly giving up too much to acquire the 11th pick so that they, so that they can take Ohio State wide receiver Chris, Chris Olive of the Ohio State University. People have been, you know, kind of, it's been kind of a, a mixed bag in regards to the reaction of this pick because they, they, they like the guy, they like that he's talented, he can play, he can get behind defensive backs, he can get separation, catch, every, catch pretty much everything, got a good catch radius. But some people think that it could be a risk involving that. That and that's because the Saints gave up draft picks to give him to get up to to that spot to take him. They made it, um, a trade with um, the Washington uh, Commanders for the eleven spot in return. Commanders got the sixteen spot in the draft and the Saints third in four round selections in this year's draft. Um, my response to that is, it is what it is, man. You you can't have it both ways. You can't, you know, get the two. You can't move up to get the first two picks in the draft. Well, not the first two, but you can't move up to get two picks in the draft, 16 and 19, and then sit there and be comfortable and believe that these players are going to just fall to you without, you know, Makes it, making some more maneuvering to get up, get up higher in the draft to get these players because chances are this guy could have went to the the, um, the Philadelphia Eagles, um, the Washington Commanders, you know whoever, you know what I'm saying. Commanders felt like they had a, another opportunity, probably was were going to take Olive, but it probably the Saints made that offer to him, kind of felt like, hey, look, there's another guy we could target, and he decided to move back in the draft, move back to that. Uh, that 16th spot where the, uh, not 16, yeah, yeah, 16th spot where the Saints picked at. So, it is what it is, man. You got to take a risk, man. Sometimes you got to take a risk. If you're a team that's trying to go all in, you're all in for it again, which the Saints are showing us right now, you got to take chances to get the guys that you want to have on the football team. And the Rams did it. You know, they, they constantly do it all the time with, um, with their players, with acquiring their talent, you know. So you can't have it both ways when it comes to um, these type of players, man. The people were complaining since last season that the Saints didn't have a wide receiver, another a number two wide receiver, or a guy that can take over ball games. We know while Michael Thomas was out, and you know I will, I do agree that yes, Sean Payton mismanaged the situation. He overvalued the guys that he had on his roster. Marquez Callaway was not a guy that can be a number one or WR two. But I think with Chris Oliver on his team, they're going to be they're going to open up things for him, and he's going to have a, a solid year. He finished the 2020, 2021 season strong, in my opinion, with the numbers he put up. He was essentially leading wide receiver, but he's still not. That's still not a role of where, excuse me, the way you want him to be on this football team. And I think with Oliver on his team, paired with Michael Thomas. That opened up a lot of possibilities, a lot of things, a lot of opportunities for him to get, to be better in this offense. It also opened up chances for De, uh, Deontay Hart to do better things in this offense as a wide receiver, along with being a kick returner slash punt returner. You know, so it's just so many things that this, this is going to do. It's going to open up for him. And if Olive in his rookie season just come in and just, I would say, put up 1,100 yards, 85, you know, 75, 85 passes, receptions, 10 touchdowns. Saints made the playoffs. Nobody thinking about these third, these third, these picks that the Saints give up. You know, people are so enamored with acquiring picks and all that. So enamored with that stuff, man. Sometimes, I mean, you gotta roll the dice and take a chance. Of course, he could. That's a chance. Uh, Alave could be hurt, could get hurt. That's with any player, even the Saints. Decide to stay, stay put. The, the player that they're gonna get has a chance of being hurt, you know. So that's always gonna be a risk with this stuff, man. You have to, 
you're a contending team, you're a team you, you believe that you can beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You already did beat them twice, well, four, four different times in the regular season. You believe that you can hang with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You believe you can hang with the Los Angeles Rams, San Francisco 49ers, Green Bay Packers, or Dallas Cowboys, or whatever. In the NFC, you go out and make those risks. You take those risks so that the team can be better going forward. You know, this guy, you get this guy for next four to five years on a rookie deal. You don't have to pay him nothing right now. Nothing. And that was, it was, it's worth it, in my opinion. It's worth it to have this guy on your team. You know? So we just got to, you know, see how everything plays out in the future, man, with this, this pick, man, before we rush to jump to conclusion on what the Saints gave up for him. Of course he's going to get, he can get hurt, man. That's with any young prospect, young talent, you know. Felt like, yeah, in the third round, you know, people come fuss, you know, fussed about, you know, the pick reaching for Alante Taylor because you gave up your third, third round selection for um, Olive. Hey, man, look, that's the cost of it sometimes. That's the cost of it, of doing, doing deals like this, you know. And given Dennis Allen's track record, coaching staff, Chris Richards, um, resume working with DB, DBs, developing guys, I think Elijah Taylor's going to be fine. And they're going to find a role for him on this football team. Plain and simple. So I'm not really concerned about giving up, you know, the talent, the, 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 the picks that we did to um, acquire Chris Olive. Now, I must say that I felt like they, they should have took the Kobe Dean in the in the um, in the second round when they had the opportunity to, but they decided to go with uh, Demarco Jackson in the fifth round. So people outside the same circle saying that he's a steal. So we'll we'll find out. So I'm not gonna bash that pick as well. You know, I'm just gonna see how everything plays out. Even though I necessarily don't agree with going going that route, but we did need the Saints did need the depth behind um, Demar Davis and K Nellis. You know, it's just in case one of those guys get hurt and if Quan is not coming back. So, we'll see. All right, man. That's all I have for y'all for right now, man. Give me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me know how y'all feel. Do you think the Saints gave up too much for Chris Olive and the Orso? Are you concerned? It, you know, if that, if an injury can, you know, possibly rethink those um, the decisions. Also in the description box below, check out strike7sports.com forward slash saints. Blaze content, the one saints organization. That's all I have for y'all for right now. Have a blessed night. Peace. Who that? I'm out.